A video was recently released on the Halo YouTube channel going into more depth of the hashtag Ask343 about the sandbox. We had some interesting points talking about the difference between multiplayer and campaign weapon tuning possibilities, the possibility of the classic Magnum coming back, and the ability to skyjack vehicles with the grappling hook and so much more utility that, that equipment has to offer. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos make sure you tap that like button. It lets me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite. Let's get right into the details here. But even though we had a nice long blog about the sandbox going into Halo Infinite and the way they're looking to tune it up and kind of give it some breath of fresh air really for the Halo series in general, they recently released a video going into more details, kind of explaining some parts within that and also giving us some more details that they didn't talk about at all within that blog update. So I wanted to kind of give you the TLDR in this 25 minute long video that they uploaded. So one of the first things that they talked about in this video is the weapon tuning differences between multiplayer and campaign and will one affect the other that's currently what we've had previously in halo like with halo 5 when they updated the battle rifle to make it kind of just not work very well uh that also affected the campaign side of things made the battle rifle in halo 5 just kind of just not fun to utilize at all within the campaign what they mentioned here specifically is that they want to be able to tune weapons differently between each side because what works in multiplayer might not work in campaign or vice versa and so they want to make sure that they have themselves set up properly and currently they do so then they can have weapons tuned differently in multiplayer than in campaign though later on in the video they do mention though that they still want to try to keep some cohesiveness to the whole thing uh, they bring up the example of like if they made the sidekick like crazy powerful for whatever reason that the you know it works well in multiplayer but then you're just shredding through brutes and elites like no problem in campaign yeah that causes an issue and so they recognize that and they want to make sure that they leave themselves open to where they can do that but they also also want to maintain the some continuity between multiplayer and campaign so like a battle rifle is going to always act like a battle rifle uh, i have a feeling sidekicks probably always going to act like a sidekick they may tune like the damage or the rate of fire a little bit or something like that but it's always going to be kind of like a smaller secondary pistol kind of thing they do mention specifically that they do want pistols to be more like pistols and rifles to be more like rifles but that doesn't necessarily mean that some legacy weapons that we'll be talking about later in this video have a chance to come back into halo the next couple questions i go into kind of goes more in depth about the grappling hook that we have in halo infinite we saw the usage when it came to grabbing like a fusion coil throwing it that was pretty freaking awesome but what else can you do with that grapple hook well apparently you can do a few other things like hijack a banshee they mentioned that saying yes you can do that and they do say that it's a bit of a skillful shot so it's not you know, super easy that to be able to pull it off. Uh, Unishek, who's a great player, who legitimately is like a really good player at Halo, that he's been able to pull off a couple times, but he says it's not that easy either. So that's really cool. Kind of go for like a big play kind of moment. Uh, they do mention also with a grapple hook that you can actually utilize it to grab weapons and bring them towards you, which is going to be a much more interesting way to kind of go about weapon scavenging within Halo. Uh, I could see maybe like if it's a high elevation, you can probably grapple hook and grab it down to yourself. Uh, but I don't really see it being utilized a whole lot because most of the times, like, I never find myself in many situations where it's really difficult to find or grab a weapon. Maybe, if it, like I said, like if it's hanging on a higher ledge and halfway off, you could probably pull it to yourself that way. That would be super useful. But uh, I wouldn't expect that to be changing things too much when it comes to weapon acquisitions within Halo. A quick section here to talk about damage types, right? So we have kinetic weapons like bullets, good against health, blue plasma rifle stuff, good against shields, but what is the Ravager gonna be good for and specialize in? They say that it uses kind of a brute plasma rifle kind of style to it. So basically it overheats quickly, but deals a high damage, kind of like what we had classically with traditional brute plasma weapons. So it's good to see that we're seeing some familiar aspects come back to Halo Infinite, but also with a different twist to it as well, especially since the Ravager has recently been changed to be more of an area of denial kind of weapon rather than a direct uh, killing potential that we saw in the demo. So it certainly has changed quite a bit and it'll be interesting to see what we're gonna have moving forward. 
Though touching on traditional weaponry from Brutes, they talk about the spike grenade as well. Specifically about how it's actually gonna be dealing more damage on initial impact than we've had previously. So they bring up the example with a grunt that if you hit him with a direct stick with a spike grenade, it actually will kill a grunt on impact and then explode. So which I can already see like some funny moments, just like sticking a grunt and just blah, and just like flopping over to him with like a grenade like in his face. I'm already picturing the hilarious moments of that. Now I'm sure many of you may have noticed that in that gameplay demo that the Warhog's front left tire gets blown off by a suicide grunt which they actually go into more detail about that in here saying they want to make the vehicle damage interaction a little bit more dynamic in a way. So basically, instead of just like damaging it by just like, you know, having some health that like we've had previously in Halo games, and then it just goes to doomsday and explodes. They want to talk about how you can affect vehicles differently as well. So then like, if you're taking damage, your vehicle will actually play different than it was previously. Like I say, you blow out a tire, well, it might drive a little differently. If you blow, you know, hit up the right side, maybe it kind of lists to the right or something like that. I'm making that last point up, but uh, definitely they mentioned about how with different damage dealt to the vehicle will affect how it functions as well, which is something we've never had in a Halo game. Really exciting. Like we've had sweet spots before kind of thing or hot spots. Like if you hit the ghost with that turning turbine thing that's on the side of it, then with a sniper rifle, I think it's like a one shot kill. Or if you're like in a Phaeton, you shoot it underneath it with that big orangey glow spot, it deals more damage, but it doesn't really affect how the vehicle plays out. Now, my only concern with this is how easy is it to affect the vehicles to play around with? Because this could greatly affect how they can be, well, effective on the battlefield. If you can blow out a tire by just throwing a grenade on it, then, you know, it, I think in BTB that like a vehicle could be taken out pretty quickly, which would really affect the gameplay. And so it does sound awesome, yet also a little concerning. This is just something we'll have to get our hands on and play around with. And get the chance. Now I know a lot of you, myself included, are kind of bummed that the classic shotgun and the classic magnum are not returning at launch at least for Halo Infinite, but they do mention here specifically two things that I think are really interesting that you'll want to take note of. One is that the Bulldog is like a low power high fire rate shotgun, but they mentioned here specifically that there is a shotgun that kind of fills the role of the classic shotgun as well as a high power damage, high damage dealing kind of shotgun like the classic shotgun that we've had previously already in the game. They just haven't showcased it yet. So there is gonna be a weapon that fills in that role. So if there's something like that, that's just as fun to use as like the classic shotgun, I would be okay with that to be honest. Like I'm not, I'm not super, connected to that shotgun in any kind of way. Plus if there's already like a high power shotgun that's like the classic shotgun already in the game, it kind of makes it so then bringing that weapon back would be kind of difficult unless they make it like a unique weapon skin of some type or whatnot, but I highly doubt that. Uh, but they do mention also specifically about the Magnum coming back in Halo Infinite. He doesn't say that it will, but he says this specifically that I think really makes it more probable that it will happen. Yeah, we, we love the Magnum. It's a, it's special in our hearts. And when and if and how we bring it back, we want to make sure we do it right and that the fans will recognize it as the Magnum. And we're not, we're not tweaking it or changing it from what it used to be. So yes, he recognizes the love for the Magnum in the game, and he just wants to make sure that when they bring it into the game, that it fits the sandbox properly. Uh, I know I've heard some people say they want to make comparisons to like the Wingman from Apex Legends, which I think would be a really good compromise right there. Though it would kind of mess with the fire rate a bit of the Magnum, making it kind of lose that feel that we had because the Magnum shoots very fast, especially in combat evolve. Like, you know, it's fully auto actually, if you didn't realize. It'd be tough to kind of get that same classic Magnum feel with such a slow fire rate, but you know, we had a slow fire rate Magnum in Halo 3, but it didn't really exactly feel the same. Like the, the best Magnums I feel like ever in CE and in Halo 5. But they mentioned about how they wanted to make sure that if you're holding like a sidearm kind of pistol weapon, that it plays like a pistol. It doesn't really replace like a a full on rifle. So it's gonna be kind of awkward if they do bring it back, but they mentioned multiple times within this video about how they want to bring back legacy weapons back, bring in new weapons in the Halo Infinite sandbox as well. So uh, for all you shot classic shotgun and classic Magnum fans, I strongly feel if there's enough community response, which there already has been, that we will see these weapons return in Halo Infinite at some point, maybe within the first year even. 
And to round off the video, they had two questions for Quinn Del Hoyo. One was, which is your favorite sandbox and which one is your favorite sandbox weapon? His favorite sandbox, he said it was Combat Evolved, mainly because he mentioned about how each weapon felt so different in that sandbox, which is very true. Obviously, the Magnum was crazy overpowered. Um, they could fix that nowadays, but they couldn't really do it back in 2001. Uh, but he mentioned something specifically about the plasma rifle from CE, where if you're shooting a player that it actually would stun them a little bit to where they couldn't turn around as fast. So if you're hitting them from behind with a plasma rifle, you can just melee them in the back pretty easily because they just kind of stunned and wouldn't be able to move. Uh, he mentions his favorite sandbox weapon would actually be the needle rifle from Halo Reach because not only does it just deal out damage like a carbine, but also if it does like super combine ability to where it can, you know, cause an explosion, which it seems like what Quinn Del Hoyo likes a lot about Halo's sandbox is that it has utility beyond just doing damage, doing something more interesting and fitting a role properly. That's why he likes the sandbox because each weapon feels so unique and different from the next one. That's something that we kind of lost, especially with Halo 4 and 5. And he likes the uniqueness of each weapon as well, saying like the stun ability from the plasma rifle, the super combined ability from the needle rifle as well. So I would expect to see these kind of features coming into Halo Infinite as well. These are just kind of you know, fluff questions, obviously, but they give you some insight because this guy is the lead of the sandbox team at Halo Infinite. So this guy is kind of like, these are the, the ideas we're going to be pushing forward. And so just getting a little insight of the things that he likes about Halo, lets you know the kind of things to expect with Halo Infinite. Obviously, he's not the say all be all when it comes to weapons and the sandbox within Halo Infinite, but he does have a strong say. And though I do like his philosophies as well, that having the weapons do more than just deal damage. But for the most part, it really just kind of elaborated on things they already talked about, but they did give us some new bits of information as well, which was really exciting about this video. I really hope to see another one of these Ask343 videos with the next development update coming out here in February, so keep it in touch for that, guys. If you want to stay up to date with Halo and if you've been on the loop for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.